Yeah. So the talk will be by Eduardo uh, Esquierdo and Randall Beer on an integrated neuromechanical uh, model of uh, steering in C. elegans. Here we go. This is Eduardo. I'm sorry to have made it to ICAT. I was really looking forward to it. I ran into last minute issues trying to obtain a visa to enter the UK. So I'll give this talk as a video. Okay. This is work that Randy and I have been doing in collaboration. Trying to understand the neural basis of behaviors in the nematode form, C. elegans. Let me jump straight in. For obvious reasons, there's quite a bit of interest in understanding the human brain. This interest has recently been backed up by two fairly large funding initiatives. The Brain Initiative from the US, focused on improving the technology to record and manipulate neural activity, and the Human Brain Project from the European Union, focused on developing a whole brain computational model. The astronomical numbers involved in such a project makes it daunting as it is. Yet, even if we gathered complete data from the brain and created a full model, we have little idea of how to understand it. In science, it is often a good idea to try to understand simpler versions of a problem of interest before tackling more complicated instances. So our work has been focusing on a simpler animal, Senior Hadidas elegans. This one millimeter long nematode was selected by Nobel Laureate Sidney Bremner in 1965 as an ideal animal for studying neural development and function. So let me tell you a few reasons why this organism is an ideal candidate for building the first computational model of a whole organism. It has a rich behavioral repertoire. It can locomote in different environments. It can respond to a variety of stimuli. It can specially navigate and it can even learn. Its entire developmental lineage is known. Its entire genome has been sequenced. Crucially, in a tour de force work, the whole animal has been anatomically reconstructed. So we understand well the complete body wall musculature, the digestive and reproductive organs, and crucially for us, the nervous system. The nervous system consists of 302 neurons connected by around 6,000 chemical synapses, 900 gap junctions, and about 1,400 neuromuscular junctions. It's important to note that this is the only connector that has been mapped out to this level of detail to date, and this is unlikely to change in the foreseeable future. It's also pretty sobering to realize that it has been mapped out for almost 30 years now. So given the wealth of information available, the goal is obvious. We would like to build and understand a complete brain body environment model of C. elegans. And although it's certainly ambitious, it is not nearly as ambitious as modeling the entire human brain. So what's stopping us? Despite the wealth of structural information, electrophysiology is woefully incomplete. We do not know the strength of the chemical synapses, or even their polarity, whether they are excited or inhibitory. And the response properties of most neurons has not been characterized yet. There's been two main obstacles, extremely tiny neurons, and hydrostatic skeleton that bursts like a balloon if you try to penetrate it. So although targeted electrophysiology and optical imaging are becoming increasingly common, a complete electrophysiological characterization of C. elegans is still ways off. We shouldn't have to wait until we have the complete data set to begin to make progress in understanding how such a system generates behavior. What can we do in the meantime? Our approach involves first constraining our models by what we know, the neuroanatomy, the behavior, the partial electrophysiology. We then use stochastic optimization to find possible settings for the unknown electrophysiological parameters. We typically use a algorithms. Here's a simple example. 
Imagine we have two unknown parameters in the model and a performance measure. Since these problems are stochastic and under constraint, different models produce different solutions. So we run many evolutionary searches, producing an ensemble of possible models, all of which are consistent with the constraints. In other words, we use the evolutionary algorithm as a hypothesis generator. We then analyze the entire ensemble of solutions. Part of the analysis involves finding clusters of different solutions and coming up with the simplest experiments that can tease apart these different solutions. These experiments can then be used as testable hypotheses of the organisms. The results from experiments can be used as additional constraints for new iterations of the model and future evolutionary searches. In order to exemplify our approach, we focused here on a spatial orientation behavior that has been of particular interest to neuroscientists in recent years. C. Agnes exhibits sinusoidal crawling on agar. When placed in a gradient with a certain chemical, the worm is great at finding the source. Until recently, it had been thought that the worm navigated only using a bias random walk strategy. New experiments have revealed that the worm can also steer directly towards the source. This strategy is referred to as clamatasis, so it involves gradual and directed change during the oscillatory head sweeps necessary for locomotion. The behavior was first observed in soft gradients, but it's now being observed in other chemical gradients as well as other other gradients and even temperature gradients too. The first step in our analysis is to identify the neurons and pathways comprising the steering circuit. When we consider all the ways in which the chemosensory neurons connect to the head and neck motor neurons, we obtain what we call the maximal network. This contains all possible steering circuits. But it also just contains 90% of all neurons and 98% of all connections. So we were interested in the minimal network. We constrained the network by only the most crucial chemosensory neurons and the neck motor neurons most likely to be involved in modulating the amplitude of the head movement based on experimental observations. We further constrained the network by only the shortest and the strongest path, those with the most number of synaptic contacts. Interestingly, these considerations led us to interneurons AY and AZ, both of which now have been shown to play a significant role in climatics. We modeled the head circuit using the chemosensory neurons, interneurons, and multineurons found in the connectome. We included all the chemical signals that scavenged them to send neuromuscular functions. In terms of the electrophysiology, the only neurons in the circuit that have been characterized are the chemosensory neurons. We know one of them responds to increases in concentration, and the other one responds to decreases in concentration. So we model them as simple on and off cells, respectively. We use a more generic neuron model for the rest of the neurons in the circuit. There's a passive membrane component, an active membrane component with a nonlinear conductance a nonlinear graded chemical synapse and electrical synapses. One thing to keep in mind is that Cielian's neurons are not known to exhibit the classic actual potential. So despite the simplicity, this model neuron captures well the variety of responses that have been observed in Cielian's neurons so far. The job of the evolutionary algorithm then is to tune the strength and polarity of the connections and the intricacy properties of each of the neurons in the circuit. In previous work, we evolved this steering circuit in a toy model of the head and neck. So there's a whole body of work that I'm not going to talk about, where we analyze the ensemble of evolved solutions using first dynamical systems theory and then using information theory to understand 
how the behaviorally relevant information flow through the entire circuit from sensors to neurons down to the motor neurons. We looked at how that information changed over time, the paths it traveled through, and how the resulting information architecture compared to the structural properties of the evolved networks. Instead, the work we focused on for this paper was to move beyond the circuit. We embedded the channel taxi circuit into a biomechanically accurate model of the nematode head and body, and we integrated it with a neuromechanical model of forward locomotion. The body model was based on the work of Boyle, Berry, and Cohen. We implemented our own highly optimized version of the biomechanical model of the C. elegans body, so that it was amenable to evolution. The model consists of 48 body segments controlled by 12 neuromuscular units. One of the points of interest is that the physics of the model are sufficiently realistic to generate forward propulsion by generating the right rhythm of movements against the environment. During an evolutionary run, we placed the simulated worm in the middle of a petri dish with a chemical we allowed the worm to move for a short time and we measured whether the worm got any closer to the direction of the peak. We tested each individual on three different conditions where the direction of the peak relative to the initial orientation of the worm changed. We ran four evolutionary runs with different random seeds. As the fitness evaluation during evolution had to be kept short because of computational time, we tested the best agents on longer trials on a few different environments. We focus here only on the best one. We tested the evolved form on a clinical gradient, similar to what the evolved on, but for longer trials and more starting conditions. The tracks are similar to those observed in the form. We also varied the steepness of the gradient and evaluated the performance other than very shallow gradients, the steering circuit generalizes as well. Finally, we tested the warm and Gaussian gradients, which are more realistic for chemicals diffusing on higher. And again, the evolved circuit generalized well. So in this, we demonstrated that when these two models, the steering circuit and the forward locomotion circuit, are incorporated into the same biomechanically realistic body model, Locomotion smoothly follows the steering direction set by the chemotaxi circuit, even in the absence of direct neural coupling between the two. Let me show you what the old worm looks like when it's steering. The simulated worm is starting at the center of the petri dish, and the orange disk represents the peak of the gradient. In the close up of the worm, you can see how it begins to generate movement forward and gradually curve towards the peak. I let this run for a little while. All right. It is currently unknown which specific head and neck muscles are required for steering in the worm. In order to explore this question, we ran new batches of evolutionary runs where we allowed our climataxis circuit to drive different combinations of muscles and we studied which combinations produce the most effective steering. We found that many different combinations are consistent with chemotactic performance. The only requirement was that the anterior motor <coughs> muscles were included. The most efficient solutions were found when the steering circuit controlled the anterior eight head muscles. In the previous simpler model, we had proposed an experiment to deduce a sensory motor transformation responsible for steering in the world. The experiment consists of 
stimulate their own oral cells at different points during the phase of locomotion and measuring the deviation of the worm's translational direction. When we performed that same experiment in this new biomechanical model, the results were consistent with our initial hypothesis. From these results, we could predict what would happen if the sensory neurons were stimulated only during certain points in the phase, repeatedly. Results from our model were consistent with recent experiments on phasic stimulation of chemosensory cells, showing that repeatedly stimulating a chemosensory cell that is sensitive to offsets during dorsal head sweeps produce a path exhibiting dorsally oriented curvature, and likewise for ventral head sweeps. The effect is opposite when stimulating a chemosensory cell that is sensitive to downsteps in concentration as we predicted. Finally, the integration of the steering circuit in a biomechanical model of the body allows us to compare more closely the properties of the evolved solutions with those of the actual worm. Video microscopy analysis has shown that the locomotion of C. elegans can be decomposed into four eigenworms, which together account for 95% of the observed variance in shape statistics. The first two eigenworms are sinuous and quantitatively describe the traveling wave that moves along the body. Applying the same analysis to our model, we also find that the first two eigenworms describe forward of motion. In addition, we found that the third eigenworm appears to be related to steering. However, Unlike in the actual worm, the eigenspectrum of our model only gradually improves, with the first four eigenworms accounting for only 65% of the variance. This suggests that the model may not propagate the effect of steering in the same way as the worm, and serves as a refined target for future modeling efforts. In this work, we combine two different circuits responsible for two related behaviors, steering and forward locomotion. Even though the circuits were not coupled, the two behaviors interacted in a complementary way to produce appropriate combined behavior. One of the directions for future work is to incrementally integrate different behavioral circuits into the same model. I'll give you three examples of the type of integration we're currently working on. First, backward locomotion. One of the interesting things of this integration is that the network that is responsible for backward locomotion overlaps with some neurons in the forward locomotion circuit. Second, calvinesis. The other main strategy the worm uses to go upgrading, which involves changes from moving forward and backward. One of the interesting things of this integration is that both chemotaxis strategies are aimed towards the same goal, and they have overlapping neurons, but they operate under different time scales. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, worms can learn. If they don't find food at the top of a chemical gradient, they start avoiding that chemical. It's likely that the steering circuit, in this case, recruits other neurons and pathways to alter the behavior. Furthermore, these behaviors are observed over a wide range of stimuli, including many different chemicals, odors, temperatures. So as we integrate different circuits, we will get to study decision-making in the worm. How it can, for example, follow a chemical while avoiding a certain odor. In summary, I've given you an overview of the goals of my current research all animal models of the mechanisms of C. elegans behavior. I've explained the methodology, which consists of a combination of constraint stochastic optimization with an ensemble analysis of the solutions. I focus on one behavior as an example, a form of spatial orientation called chemotaxis. I give the idea of the different types of questions we can ask and how they can lead to new experiments 
and test all hypotheses in the organism. And I gave you an idea of where this project is headed in the near future. So I want to take this opportunity to mention that I'm starting my new lab at Indiana University. And I'm looking for grad students and postdocs interested in this kind of modeling. So if you're interested, get in touch. Thank you. Uh, I've been in contact with Eduardo and we're going to set up Skype right now. So stick around and collect your thoughts. We'll have some questions. Uh, so what, what do you think? Uh, yeah, switch. We're still seeing my computer. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We can also... I think now we have no eyes, but some... So, oh, actually. Yeah, but okay. uh, we'll need to connect to the, to the speakers. I don't think it's already there. I think it's really fine now. If you, if, if you log in here... Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. I'm not sure if he'll be able to hear your questions. Um, we can just you just repeat it. You just repeat it to him. Or or maybe you can. No, no. We just we just repeat. It. Re repeat. Okay. So maybe make the thing that this. Okay. So so I'll have you to have questions. Um. Uh, let me um. Hold on. I mean, you can just. <laughs> That's fine. Yes. 